Well, hello. Hopefully I can uh, live up to the standards of being the last speaker. Who here, just out of curiosity, has a LinkedIn account? Okay. Who here actually uses their LinkedIn account? All right, this is going to be a good session for you guys because there's some people that aren't doing anything with it and some people that are active. So I've got a little bit for each group. So today I'm going to teach you how to build a present and attract new clients on the world's largest networking platform. But first I want to share a little bit about my own story and about how I even got to this stage to begin with. So I started on LinkedIn, I had an account since 2011, and I sat on it for a very long time. I don't know if anybody can relate to this, but I didn't know what to do with it. Is it for job seekers? What do I post? How do I post it? What is professional? What's not? I just didn't know what to do, so I did nothing with it. And then when I was uh, about 29 years old, I lost a job that I was working at. Um, I was laid off from a tech startup, and I was about a month away from my 30th birthday, and in my head, I had all these ideas of what 30 years old is going to look like. I'd have the big house and the family and the stable career. And what I was finding instead was that I was kind of bouncing around from job to job once every few years, and I never felt like I had control over my career destiny. And so I started using LinkedIn, looking at LinkedIn as, well, maybe this is the place where I could build a personal brand and a network that was bigger than where I worked or what I did. And so I started writing on LinkedIn. And my first article went viral in March of, of 2016. It was called, How I Landed My Dream Job in Two Weeks on LinkedIn. And this thing, it blew me away because I had been in marketing for a very long time and I'd done the pretty white papers and the fancy videos and all those things. And yet this thing that took me half an hour to create that was, you know, it was messy and it had memes from the internet and I threw those in there and for some reason this resonated with people and so I, I took a look and I was like what about this piece is actually resonating with people and I realized that even though it was messy and it wasn't super polished it was still relatable it was conversational and it was helpful and this was really exciting for me because I realized in that moment that people on LinkedIn had the same goals as other platforms. You wanted to connect and grow and learn from each other. And so this was really exciting for me because I felt like I, had cre I could create a community on the platform. I was still broke at this point, but I had about a $20 budget to start building my presence on LinkedIn. So I went out and I bought a few things. I bought a tripod with a Bluetooth remote. I don't know if you've noticed this, because when I started on LinkedIn, I would share a lot of photos of myself, or photos of me in action to kind of um, give context to the story. And people gave me so much grief for that. They would be like, it's not Facebook, it's not Instagram. And so I thought to myself, I'm like, what makes a selfie a selfie? And what I've learned through this process is that if you have both hands in the photo, not a selfie. One hand out, it's a selfie. We're weird as humans. But anyways, this worked really well for, for building my presence. Um, I went out and I bought a whiteboard and I would share just quotes that were inspiring me that day. And I bought a notebook and I would share any sort of career experiences that were happening to me that I thought might resonate with other people. And over the past few years, since 2016, I've done a, a few fun campaigns, including this hashtag mug museum. So I had this uh, rickety old bookcase in my office and I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, I'm really serving the job seekers, but what about those people that are trying to impress their bosses or trying to make their business grow? How can I serve them? And so I asked people to send me their business mugs and tell me their story and I would share it with my network. And at the time I would have this big growing network. And I thought I would get like one or two of them. I ended up getting mugs from like NASA, the US Capitol. I got mugs with my face on them. And I ended up actually having to cut this campaign down early because I reached over 250 mugs and I was spending more time on the phone with FedEx than actually doing my job. When LinkedIn video came out, a few friends and I launched a campaign called Hashtag Let's Get Honest where we encourage professionals to get on camera and share a challenge that they've, had, they've experienced in their career and how they overcame it. And again, we thought one or two people might participate in this. This reached over 26 million users on LinkedIn and was officially endorsed by the CEO. Now, since uh, 2016, so much has happened in my life. Yes, I landed the dream job and then ended up partnering with my then bosses to create an agency. Now, I've worked, now I'm working solo. I've 
appeared in an Amazon Prime uh, reality TV show. I became a LinkedIn learning official instructor. Uh, I've traveled around the world speaking on stages all over the place. And I even had a collaboration with K-Swiss, so I have my own sneaker. Go figure. But what does this all mean for you guys? Well, aren't you tired of waiting around for the right opportunities come your way? I know I was. By building a presence on LinkedIn, you're able to create something that is bigger than where you work or what you do. This is all great, great for you, Michaela, but how do we do all these things? How do we grow our presence on LinkedIn? So let's get on our strategic caps. I'm gonna guide you through the process of taking your profile wherever it is right now into all-star territory. But first, let's talk about some of the reasons why you might be not be using LinkedIn as well as you should be. So a couple myths about LinkedIn. Number one is that it's going to cost money, that you need to subscribe to a premium account. Not true. Just like you don't need to sign up for a membership at a super fancy gym and get like the Lululemon leggings and like the wristband for your cell phone, you just need what you already have to be great on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is only for job seekers and recruiters. This makes a lot of sense. So when LinkedIn first started, it actually was considered kind of like a job search platform. That was kind of its original intention, and then it's morphed into something very different, especially since the acquisition by Microsoft a few years ago. So it absolutely is no longer considered a platform for just job seekers and recruiters. I want you guys to start thinking about LinkedIn as the world's largest networking event. Right? Yeah, there's going to be people that are there that are looking for work, but there's going to be a lot of people there that are also looking to do business. And then the last one is that LinkedIn is only for B2B businesses. This one is just not true. Yes, it is known primarily as a B2B platform, but B2C platforms are absolutely crushing it on LinkedIn. And here's the deal. If your ideal audience includes employed professionals, they are on LinkedIn, which I'm hoping that most of you guys are speaking to employed professionals. But let's talk a little bit about sales and business development and lead. Does LinkedIn actually work for generating leads? I've heard both things, right? I hear people that say all the time that, you know, their inbox is full with messages from recruiters and spam. And then I hear people that are saying that their lives, like mine, have been transformed by the platform. So which one is it? Is it a ghost town? Or is it a gold mine for professionals like you and me? Well, here's the thing. It's like anything in life. Most of the people that are complaining about why LinkedIn doesn't work are the ones that are trying to um, withdraw without investing time and energy into it. So if you want to succeed on LinkedIn, you need to do some of the, the strategies and the tips that I'll talk about today. And just to get you guys more excited about LinkedIn, because this is a huge opportunity. And when I say it's the world's largest networking event, I mean it is the world's largest networking event. Uh, 600 million users are currently on the platform, and it is skyrocketing. The only other platform that's comparable in terms of growth is Instagram. And people don't realize this is like the silent thing that's happening. Over 40% of millionaires worldwide are on LinkedIn right now. The money is on LinkedIn. There are two new users every second. That's crazy. The growth is unparalleled. But how do we do that? How do we start? Okay, the potential is there. The possibility is there. But how do we begin? So step number one of using LinkedIn for business is that you want to optimize your profile. This is where it all starts. This is where you show what you're all about, what you offer, and who you serve. And here's what you want to achieve when it comes to your LinkedIn profile. You want it to be client facing and you want it to be built to attract buyers and sellers in your area. And there's a few ways that you can do that. I'm going to focus on the ones that most people have the most trouble with. So number one is your profile photo. Number two is your background photo or your cover image, whatever they call it. Number three is your headline. Number four is your summary. And then number five are your recommendations. And I'll walk through each one of those and how you can optimize each. Okay, so your profile photo, a couple things. Number one, you want it to be approachable. 
right? Imagine yourself at a networking event. If you're like this in the corner, no one's going to approach you, right? You guys know at this event, you're going to go and mingle. Try doing that and see how many people actually come up to you. Open body language, big smile, right? You want your face to take up 40 to 60% of the frame. Remember that a lot of us are really bad with faces and we're really bad with names, right? And so you want to make it as clear as possible. If you meet somebody today and you send them a connection request and they don't remember your name, they can be like, oh yeah, I remember her. We had this conversation about X, right? So you want it to be 40 to 60% of the frame. This one's pretty obvious, but you want it to be well lit and high resolution. Again, if you have a shadow over your, yeah, it looks really cool when you have a shadow over half of your face, but put the artwork elsewhere. Use your LinkedIn profile to network and shake as many hands as possible. And then lastly, you want it to be consistent with the offline you. So I have some clients that are like, Michaela, I really like this photo of me though. And I'm like, that's great. You look awesome in your tux on your wedding day but it's not the greatest for your LinkedIn profile, right? So however you show up when it comes to meeting new clients is how you should appear on your LinkedIn profile. A strong personal brand is consistent. So I'm gonna walk through a couple of examples of um, some people that have really great profile photos. I'm also gonna go through some do nots because they're fun. I'm gonna apologize in advance. I really hope that none of you show up on this screen. I tried really, really hard, but we need to learn somehow, right? Okay, so here's my client, Adil. Um, he's from Ottawa. Notice a couple things. Again, open body language. His face takes up 40% of the frame. He's got a bright white background, so it's very clear. You can see his face. Here's another uh, real estate agent uh, here in uh, North York. Again, bright, smiling photo, approachable, open body language, and a non-distracting background, right? It looks nice. Here's, let's go for the do nots. I really hope this isn't anybody here. But this, these are real profiles of rental agents around the world. I hope that I don't need to explain why this probably should not be your profile photo. But in case you're still like, but Michaela, I looked really good in that photo. I get it. Instagram, Facebook, go nuts. If you want to do business, the people that are going to be messaging you when you have a profile photo like this, I mean, they might want to do some kind of business, but not, you know, real estate, right? So whatever you're trying to attract, make sure that that's your photo. <laughs> this is super cute, right? I felt really bad. I'm like, oh, God, I'm using this as a do not. It's obviously a very sweet photo. It looks like it's a, a dad with his daughter, I'm assuming. But here's the thing. Don't make people wonder, are you a real estate agent or are you a preteen girl, right? You want to just use one photo, and you should be the only one in that photo. I see people all the time, and they have photos with like celebrities or family members. Keep them out, Facebook, wherever else you want to put it. But when it comes to business, it's just you in the photo. Okay? All right. Again, going back to that 40 to 60% of the photo rule, you can see, right, how many of you are squinting to see what, what the person looks like? If you met this person at an event, you probably wouldn't know that it was them by their LinkedIn profile, right? A couple things. They're way too far back. They're focused on the business. If you want to showcase your business, absolutely fine. But you don't need to do it in your profile photo. That's for your face, right? So he's too far away. Number two, it's in black and white, so it makes it even harder to see what he actually looks like. And there seems to be a lot of filters. Don't use the filters. Just however you look, make sure that that's what you look like on your LinkedIn profile. And then this one is just really funny. <laughs> it might be a really nice profile photo, but unfortunately it was uploaded sideways. So make sure that when you upload your photo that it isn't upside down. And a couple, uh, one ac actually big tip for you guys is make sure that your settings are on public. I have clients all the time that are like, Kayla, I'm going to all these events, I'm doing all this networking, and people aren't connecting with me, and I don't know what's going on. And then I tell them to check their settings. So on, under your profile photo, it will tell you, if you click on visibility, so it's that little eyeball, it's going to tell you who can see your profile photo. And you want it to be set to public. Because if you send a connection request to somebody you meet here today and you're not already connected, they won't be able to see your photo. So it looks like you're either a weirdo or you just don't care enough to have a profile photo. When you actually do, it's just not visible. So 
I would recommend if you do anything today, just make sure that this setting is turned on to public. All right, let's talk about background photos because they're, they're pretty tricky, aren't they? It took me a long time to figure out, okay, what goes in this space? I'm gonna simplify it as much as I can for you. So profile, uh, or profile visitors should have an instant understanding of what you do just by looking at your background photo. It's like very simple, but also very difficult, right? It's like, how do we do that? But you wanna think of that area, so your background photo, your profile photo, and your headline, most people are not gonna scroll down to the rest of your profile. So you wanna give them a very instant understanding of what you do and who you serve. Let's look at some examples. This one is almost there. This is pretty close. You know, I can tell that he's a real estate agent. I can tell that he works in Ottawa because, I mean, it's parliament buildings. He's got Ottawa in his location and then he's got Ottawa. That's probably overkill. You don't need to constantly say Ottawa, Ottawa, Ottawa. The other thing that I would do is rather than just having the parliament buildings, because that could also be somebody that maybe works in government, is make it clear, have a photo of you helping a client. Right? You in action, really showcasing that you are a real estate agent. And then rather than let us guide you home, Ottawa, I would have put something like looking for a home in Ottawa, question mark, and then contact info, right? A real call to action. But this is close. It looks good. It's easy enough to figure out what he does, but just a little bit of a few tweaks make it, would make it perfect. This is probably a better example. Stuart. Um, you can tell right off the bat, he's got a for sale sign, he's got clients. Again, if, if these stock photos are going out of style, right? We use them too much. I see the same like women in this, the stock uh, photos all the time. Use one of you and your clients. It's really easy. We all have a smartphone. If you have a smartphone, you have a camera that's good enough to take photos to put on your background photo, I promise you. And so take a photo of you working with a client. If he had been working with that client, it would have been perfect. Um, but I do love the fact that he has selling your home, it's never been so easy. And then he also has his contact information right above his, his profile photo. So he's making it super easy for anybody that wants to get in touch with him to know how to do that. And he also has a really great headline. And then here's another one. Oh, it's so close, so close. It's good, she's got her name on there, she's got her contact information. The only thing that's wrong with this is that you see, it's not optimized for this channel. So she probably used the same photo, had a designer that created the same thing for each um, platform, and then just resized it for LinkedIn. But the problem with that is that LinkedIn is tricky, right? You got the, the profile photo on a different side than other platforms, and then sometimes on mobile, it kind of is more towards the middle. So just make sure that if you're including text, that it's optimized for whatever platform that you're on. And a couple other examples, uh, here is Neil Patel, Shay Robottom. They're obviously using their LinkedIn profiles for lead generation, and I think these are really, really clear who they help, what they're looking for, and how to get in touch with them. So I think this, these are both really great examples to follow. And a couple more tips for background photo success. Number one, use a correct size. So right now it is 1584 by 396. It changes, so don't hold it against me. Um, make sure that it's high resolution. You don't want it to be blurry. You want it to look professional, right? Um, and then don't overwhelm your visitor with clashing colors or too much text. Uh, so this is actually a photo that uh, from a client of mine. And so what they do, because they have a business and they wanted to have the same sort of feel for each partner, which is totally fine. If you work for a business and they have kind of standard branding, awesome. But just make sure that you, if you do that, then you have a photo. So this photo right here can be changed out for a photo of whatever partner it's for. So I think this is a really great way of doing it. All right, let's talk about LinkedIn headlines. That's another area that's like, what exactly do you put there? Is it your job title? Is it something else? There's a couple reasons that your headline matters. Number one, it can entice your readers to learn more about what you have to offer, so it can draw people in. You can distinguish yourself in a sea of competition, so you can stand out from whoever else is also on the platform. And you give your reasons a reason to check out your profile. This one's tricky, so I'm gonna give some tips on how to knock this one out of the park. So, number one, speak directly to your ideal audience, tailor it as much as possible, be very, very clear about who you serve. 
Get specific about your value and who you serve. Be creative and focus on connecting, not impressing. I hear a lot of LinkedIn experts, especially when it comes to real estate agents, put all your awards. Please don't do this, please. It might work on other platforms. It doesn't work on LinkedIn. People on LinkedIn, they don't necessarily want to be sold to. You need to provide value for them. So the people that are doing well on LinkedIn and are in the real estate world are the ones that are talking about what they can do for the person visiting their profile. And what that actually looks like is this formula right here. So who you are plus what you do plus how you can help. I'll let you guys take a picture of that one. And this is what it ends up looking like as an example. So uh, I now have my own company. It's called MA Properties. Um, but I would be a real estate advisor at MA Properties. And then I help professionals in Ottawa find their next dream home. Very clear, very simple, straight to the point, but it's very obvious who I serve. Summaries are another area that are really tricky and people don't really know what to do with. There are a couple of reasons why your summary matters. Number one, it's the first thing that people are gonna see on your profile, and if it sucks, they're gonna stop scrolling. They're not gonna look at your experience and where you work. You can convert using your summary. Everybody, I want you to consider this, every single person that visits your LinkedIn profile is a potential lead. So how can we start converting using your LinkedIn summary? I want you to think of your LinkedIn summary as your handshake introduction to the person visiting your profile. Imagine that your LinkedIn profile is your office, okay? And you're opening the door, your prospect is on the other side. You wanna shake their hand, right? Introduce yourself. Here are some things that you wanna include in your LinkedIn summary. Number one is who you are. So that very first sentence or the very two first sentences should be kind of a summary of who you are and what you offer, who you serve. And then the next one is why you do what you do. So you wanna connect the dots for your audience and, and tell them how you got into real estate. And then in the next one is what you have to offer. So that's a list of your services and what areas you serve. And then lastly, how to get in touch with you. I see people do this all the time. They have a really great summary and then they just leave the person hanging. Well, it's like having a website and you have a great webpage, your about section, and that's like, well, I, what do, where do we go, like what do we do next, right? You gotta tell that person whether it's, uh, send me a text, send me a private message on LinkedIn, because you wanna remember that the demographic on LinkedIn is older, right, than on other platforms. So people don't just randomly send private messages to each other. If you are trying to reach an older clientele, you need to tell them, I'm open to uh, new connections, feel free to send me a private message on LinkedIn. And because I like, love coffee, I created this little acronym to help you build your summary. So LATTE stands for a number, or L is let your audience be your guide. So you want to format it for busy professionals. Don't use monster paragraphs. Break it up. Every time I'm, telling my, I'm trying to teach my clients something, I tell them to always remember on LinkedIn, you've got people that have coffee in one hand, their phone in the other, they're scrolling through their phone before their next meeting. Right? Even more so than on other platforms. People aren't in bed, well, maybe just me. There are, people aren't in bed like, oh, you know what? I'm feeling sleepy. Let me just scroll through LinkedIn and see what's in my LinkedIn feed, right? We don't do that. So it's very different than other platforms. People are doing it on the go. So you want to break up all of those paragraphs. You always want to write it in the first person. I see a lot of people, you're writing in the third person. Michaela did this and Michaela did that. Again, if you were introducing yourself to somebody at a networking event, you wouldn't use your, you wouldn't refer to yourself in the third person. Well, maybe you would, but you probably wouldn't make too many connections at that networking event, right? So always speak in the, the first person. T, tell the reader what to do next. If you just take one piece from this, when it comes to summaries, add a call to action. Tell that person if you want them to call you, email you, whatever you want them to do. Think about the fold. So you want to pitch yourself in that very first line. So. A lot of people are not going to click on see more, so that very first line is very important. You wanna make sure that you're capturing who you are and who you serve. And then E is explain your why. You wanna connect the dots and own your career stories. So we like to believe in fairy tales, right? And I always use the analogy, if you were, say you're about to have brain surgery and you have two doctors and you, have, you, got, you get to ask them one question, you say, why did you become a doctor? And you have one doctor that was like, 
you know, I had pneumonia when I was a little boy and I got really sick and I ended up in the hospital for months and I was so overwhelmed by the care and love and support that I was given while I was sick that I wanted to dedicate my life to helping other people. And you ask the second person and they go, I really just wanted a Porsche. Who would you trust with your life, right? We like to believe that things are meant to happen. And I truly believe that people don't care about what you offer until they know who you are. So it's really important to share that story of how you got into real estate. Why are you doing this? We all have those great stories. Sometimes it just takes a little digging to try and figure out what it is. And this is what it ends up looking like in action. This is um, my clients, one of my clients' uh, summaries. Contains everything that you could possibly need to do business with her, right? That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to pre-qualify our visitors. So by the time we get on a phone with people, we're talking about pricing, availability. We're talking about those, those little details. Here's another example. I was terrified of using emojis on LinkedIn for a very long time. I'm like, there's no way that you can make emojis professional. And my friend Natalia has blown my mind because she was one of the first people that I was like, it looks really good, right? Um, again, remember, we're formatting it for busy professionals, and she's broken up each paragraph with different color books. It's easy on the, the eyes. It still looks professional. And it's just easy to read. This is one of my favorite summaries of all time. This is my friend Eric. And the very first line is, hi there, I'm Eric. And as you can tell from my blue eyes and blonde hair, I'm Swedish. So it makes you want to click on see more and see what this guy is all about. And this is a really great example. And I'll talk a little bit more about some things that he does in his summary. But this is a great format. Who here has some sort of lead magnet for their business, whether it's a checklist, a quiz, a market report, something that captures an audience. One person in the back, okay. Lead magnets are really, really powerful, especially when you start, want to start converting business. So there's two things that people really love on LinkedIn, checklists and templates. So anything that can help busy professionals do something faster or achieve their goals is gold. So here's something that I do that I've never seen anybody else do, is that I add a gift into my summary. So this allows me to bring people off of the LinkedIn platform and into my email list. And I was thinking about it. I'm like, OK, well, if you were at your office and you open the door and your prospect is on the other side, after you shake their hand, what do you do? You probably offer them a hot or cold beverage, right? That's what we do naturally with people. And so I was like, what can I offer people? And then this just became this lead magnet that I'm like, wow, I don't have to do anything. I have leads just continuously coming in. So if you don't have something as a lead magnet that you can put in here, it might be time to start thinking about what you can offer to attract people onto your email list. And then recommendations. So recommendations are essentially references. They're the new references. If you're trying to build your presence on LinkedIn, look, we have a very different trust gap, right? You guys are, are in real estate. That trust gap is huge. Asking somebody to trust you to sell their home or help them buy a home is massive. For me, it's not so much, right? I have some products that are $20, you know, a couple hundred. So it's much smaller. So if you have a big trust gap, this becomes really, really important. And there's a couple different reasons why. So number one, you're going to notice on your LinkedIn platform that the recommendations text is about 50% larger than the rest of your profile. So just visually, LinkedIn makes it more pronounced. LinkedIn ranks you higher in search results when you have recommendations. This makes perfect sense, right? They're going to show if it's a real estate in Toronto, a uh, real estate agent in Toronto, they're going to show the ones that are recommended by other people. Um, social proof is a huge thing in terms of buying. I'm sure that you guys, who here has Google recommendations or recommendation or Facebook or, yeah, they're helpful, right? It makes a big difference. And they can and should be repurposed for other sections of your profile, like your summary or your experience section. So a couple of reasons why you should repurpose your recommendations. They're way at the bottom of your profile, so it's hard to find them. Um, this is a great way to add media to your profile. And you can use them to convert on your LinkedIn summary. So I'm going to show you those last two. So the first one, when I started my business, I was like, OK, I've been in marketing for a very long time, but I haven't worked solo. So what do I do? 
and I started using the recommendations from my clients and I would put them into branded photos and then I would attach it to my experience section. And then people could just kind of sort through all these beautiful recommendations that my clients had left for me. Pretty cool, right? Another way you can do it is that you can add quotes into your summary section. Just a line or two, what my clients say, client testimonials. Use that social proof to get people to connect with you. All right, and step number two is to create content to attract buyers and sellers. I've been doing research for a long time, and I'll tell you that finding uh, examples of uh, real estate agents doing LinkedIn well was, was tough. There's some really bad content out there. So I'm gonna walk through some examples of some content that work really well. But first, why should you care about content on LinkedIn? Well, first, you can reach the right folks with the right message. You can gather referrals by displaying thought leadership. You can stay top of mind with the people that matter most, and you can use it to conduct research. This is one of my favorite ways to use content. Who here has created content on LinkedIn? A video, a photo, only a few people. Okay, so when you create, have, has anybody ever seen the algorithm for LinkedIn? Ooh, this is gonna be interesting, maybe just to me. Um, so when you post on LinkedIn, it goes through three main signals. Number one is your identity. So where you work, who you are, your skills and your network, uh, the content, so what the content is about, how old it is, and what type of initial engagement it's getting. So this is very similar to other social media platforms. But then the last one is very unique to LinkedIn. It's behavior. So things that you've liked or shared in the past, people that you interact with frequently, and where you spend the most time in your newsfeed. What does that mean? So the, the real estate agents that are going on and they're sharing a video and then they're just kind of walking away from it and they're not responding to people that are commenting, they're not going to get as high engagement next time because LinkedIn is saying, okay, well, we also care about your behavior um, as a contributor to the LinkedIn al or LinkedIn ecosystem, right? So the more that you are engaging with other people, the more benefits you'll get for your own business. Here's some other recent changes to the algorithm. So LinkedIn is currently elevating content that users are most likely to join in conversation. They're elevating posts from somebody closer to a user's interest or network if it needs more engagement. Uh, it's elevating conversations with things that encourage a response or mention others. And it's elevating, elevating niche topics of conversation over broad ones. What does this mean in simple language? Number one, who here has never posted anything on LinkedIn? Who, who honestly has not posted anything on LinkedIn? Okay, a few, there we go. This is the best time for you to start posting on LinkedIn because the LinkedIn algorithm is actually rewarding people that are starting to create. Their goals for the LinkedIn platform are to make it this engaging place, right? So they're taking away, suppressing some of the content from people like me that don't necessarily need the extra engagement and they're giving it to newer creators. So this is, this is actually the best time to start sharing videos, photos, content on LinkedIn, which I, I hope is exciting for some of you. Um, the other things is that it's, again, focused on your behavior. So tagging people in posts, uh, asking questions. That's what LinkedIn is looking for. Is it asking for a conversation or are you just posting a listing? Who here has posted a listing on LinkedIn? Okay, no more listings on LinkedIn, okay? I'm gonna show you a better way to do that. I'm gonna talk about LinkedIn video. A couple tips for LinkedIn video success. Number one, you wanna, you wanna film in a well-lit, quiet area, so make sure that it's quiet. Film at face level. I see people all the time and they're like this. They're in their car and they're like, hey, I just, you know, I was thinking about leadership and it's like, I can see all of your nose hairs, like all the way up. There's like 50, 54, I can see all of them, right? And you also want, don't wanna do this because what are you doing? Exactly, you wanna to talk to somebody. You always wanna think of it as a networking event. How close would you stand to somebody? Probably about this, right? This is the perfect eye level and length to start posting on LinkedIn. Uh, don't wing it if you can't. Does, is anybody good at like just those kind of like, hey, I'm at this place and like doing a really great video like that? Can anybody do that? I can't, oh, I'm so jealous of people like that. I cannot. I need a full script 
And so I use an app called, oh, I don't know if I should, I'm gonna give you guys my secret. Big View, B-I-G-V-U, and it's a teleprompter app. It's for iOS, I believe it's also for Android, it's free, and what it does basically, you type out what you wanna say, and then it's just gonna overlay it. So you have a tripod, you press uh, the record button, and rather than, because you see people sometimes when they have a script but they're looking off camera, you don't wanna do that. You want it to seem genuine, right? So this is, this is amazing. You guys are gonna love me for that one. Uh, get straight to the point. Again, busy professionals are on their coffee break. If you go, so, um, I was thinking about this thing today, don't do that. Just get straight to the point, and if you can't do it, goes back to using a teleprompter, using a script. Make sure that you get straight to the point. Keep it short and sweet. Less than two minutes is probably a good place to start when you're doing video. Use a call to action. Okay, somebody watched this video of you. What do you want them to do next? Um, and then meet your audience where they are. So I see this happening a lot where people will post a video. Here's something that I've learned as a creator over the last few years. Some people learn through video, some people learn through reading, some people learn through audio. You want to touch on each type of audience. I will tell you that the people that watch my videos are not the same people that uh, read my longer posts or my articles. And so when you post a video, you also want to give the context or the summary of the video in the text itself. Then you're reaching two groups instead of just one. All right, let's talk about content ideas. This is just for you in the front. So there, this is two uh, different ways of doing it. So behind the scenes, they work really well. We love figuring out what other people are doing in their days, right? Sometimes we think it's boring, but for other people, I don't know what you guys do. I'm interested. We're, by hu it's human nature that we're interested in other people. So these are two versions of a behind the scenes video. Um, the woman on the left, she did kind of a neighborhood view. She, she was showing up, she had an open house at this beautiful property that was kind of beachfront. So she's showing this view, she's showing the beach all around the property and then cuts the video. I think this is a brilliant way of doing it. And then this guy right here does a behind the scenes, but he actually, the beginning of the video is him walking up the steps and then he walks through each room kind of like a well, like Cribs episode, I guess. There's lots of different ways you can do this, but bring people behind the scenes. You can also educate your audience. So here's a guy, a real estate agent in New York City, and he just goes out to Central Park, and I mean, he's, just, he's a great looking dude, right? So, um, and he just gets on camera, he's got a great accent, and he does a one minute, um, here's what's in the market, this is what you need to know, this is, if you're planning on buying, and it's great, it's fun, it's entertaining, and he's obviously having a great time. And then here's another woman um, that talks about selecting the best agent to manage your investment property, and she does these like quick, which, how long is this one? One minute and 59 seconds. They're very quick, and you'll note, I want you to notice something here. They're not super stylized. I have clients all the time that are like, I'm gonna experiment with video, so I'm gonna hire this videographer, I'm gonna hire this editor, I'm gonna spend thousands of dollars. Don't do that. Test, 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 right? If she wanted to go a few months from now and get the studio and all of that stuff, well, she would have tested her concept first. She's doing all these tips right now, this doesn't cost anything. Start with this. You can also laugh. LinkedIn now allows laughing in the business world. Shocking. So you can add funny memes to talk about real estate humor. Um, here's a, an associate broker that, I guess this was a, a property that wasn't so good looking, and then she added, uh, captioned this photo, and there were some really funny comments in here, but just have fun with it. Life isn't serious. Your content doesn't need to be either. And this is good for anybody that is interested. I mean, I've had lots of content that has gone viral. I don't think that there's ever a way of saying, okay, this is, these are the steps that you take for it to go viral because you can't really do anything about that. But these are the tips that I can give you in terms of how you can increase your odds of getting much higher engagement than you may be already. So the first thing, so this is a post that reached 2.5 million views. And a couple things to note. So the first thing, oops, let me go back. First thing, remember I was talking about formatting it for busy professionals? This is super readable, right? The first line is, I was laid off today. I was actually laid off the year before, but shh. Um, but it grabs a person's attention and then they're gonna read the rest of the story. 
And speaking of stories, one of the best ways to learn how to create better content is looked into script writing. So any movie that you've ever seen, it follows it's like one of seven or eight different types of script formats. This story format is called Rags to Riches. So it starts at kind of like my lowest point when I was laid off, the story that I told in the beginning of this talk, to where I was in the end, right? So it's that progression. It's kind of like a Cinderella story. And then lastly, I don't just end on the story, oh, this is the thing that happened to me, but the lessons that I learned in the process. So, and then I end with a photo that's happy to kind of reinforce this really happy message. So as I mentioned already, start with the point of the story, so that's your scroll stopper is what I call it. Format your post as a story. I'm sure that you guys have great stories. You're working with people all the time. Talk about someone buying a home and that process and what they're looking for and what it means to them. Um, include a, a photo or a video that supports your text. We're visual people and those visual elements help to reinforce our message. End with a call to action where appropriate. And always remember that your reader is the hero. Right? You want other people to feel the story, feel a certain way, feel like they are part of your world. So when I started on LinkedIn, I wouldn't get more than like a dozen likes and I was like, what am I doing wrong? Because I was sharing very intimate things, parts of my life and lessons, they were uh, my scars and my successes. But the problem was, is that I wasn't sharing why it mattered to the person that was reading it. So once I use this formula, which is what happened plus why it matters, that's when my, my engagement started to skyrocket. Other types of content that you can include, I love documents. And every time I talk about it, people are like, oh, I love, this is not the sexiest format of, of content, but this is a really great way to get your brand out there, right? And what I like about documents is that people are not only interacting with this on LinkedIn, but they can download it, so they're looking at your brand and your contact information offline as well. So two uh, examples here, Deloitte um, has a, like a newsletter, market report that they uh, send out and then they just added it to their LinkedIn profile or their LinkedIn page and then people can just download it. Um, here's another company, this is a tech uh, company that has a myth of remote real estate investing. So it's colorful, it's engaging and people can kind of scroll through or they can uh, just go ahead and download it and save it to their computer. And then the last type of content that I'll talk about today are, is curated content. So I see a lot of people in the real estate world that are sharing these really great news pieces. And that's good, but don't just share it, right? You want to, because we have enough content in our world. We're actually overloaded with content in social media. What you want to do is set yourself up as a thought leader. So if you're sharing a news article, I want you to start summarizing that news article. Why does it matter to your audience? Once you start doing, like, I would say about 50% of my content is curated content. It's about new LinkedIn news and features. And people consider me the go-to expert when it comes to LinkedIn pages because I break it down for them. I just make their life easier by telling them what they need to learn. And then lastly, articles. Has anybody ever written an article on LinkedIn? This is a really fun one, especially for people that like writing. It, it, it's right at the top of your profile. It stays there forever. It's really easy to access. And I don't know if you guys know this, but there are people on their jobs, their scouts, on, on LinkedIn and on Medium to find articles within certain niches and share it onto their platform. So I've had articles that I've written on LinkedIn that ended up on success.com, uh, Forbes, um, CNBC. CNBC alone has brought so much attention to my business because their platform is so much bigger than mine, right? So if you want to reach e an even bigger audience than that's available on LinkedIn, Make sure to start writing articles. Do it once, once a month. All right, and step number three of using LinkedIn for business is network like a pro. This part is my favorite because it's, it's just fun. It's just fun connecting with people, right? So the first thing that I want to talk about is sending connection requests. Most people, when they send connection requests, the biggest mistake that they make is not adding a message, right? We need context. Why are you connecting with me? What? I, at one point, I actually had 30,000 
pending invitations. And I would say maybe 1%, 2% of those people actually had left a message. So make sure that you stand out by leaving one. And here, I, I looked at the ones that I did accept, and I tried to figure out for you guys, why did I accept those? What was it about them? And they all kind of followed this very basic formula. So personalized greeting, plus how you know them, plus why you want to connect, plus a friendly or polite sign off. And this is what it ends up looking like. Hi, Brenda. It was so great meeting you at the open house for 100 Main Street on Saturday. I hope that you're settling into town, and if you need any coffee shop recommendations, please let me know. I'd love to stay in touch about the property. Pretty good, right? That's better than, than not putting anything at all, and the person's going to be like, oh, yeah. I mean, I don't. hopefully she's not going to a million open houses, but it's giving as much context as she needs. And then pitching. That's one of the biggest things that a lot of people have a bad reputation for is as soon as you connect with them, they pitch you their product, right? You can pitch on LinkedIn. You absolutely can, but this is how you do it. So this is actually a formula that was created by a friend of mine, John Nemo, and he's all about social selling on LinkedIn. And it's one that I use and I absolutely swear by. So the first thing is that you ask a question to the person. Number two is that you offer something of value for free. Number three is that you ask for permission and then number four is make it no pressure for them. So here's how it actually ends up working. So has anybody seen these messages on LinkedIn where it's like, congrats on your, your work anniversary or happy birthday? And you're like, oh, what do I do with all these, right? So this is what I do with mine. I sell to them. <laughs> so this person said, congrats on your work anniversary. Keep up the good work. And I responded, thanks so much, David. I'm thrilled to officially have officially survived my first year as a solo opener. Thank goodness for coffee. Am I right? Hey, I'm curious. Are you interested in maximizing your presence here on LinkedIn? If so, I have a pretty nifty LinkedIn profile checklist that you may find handy. If you'd like a copy, let me know and I can send over the link. And if you're not interested, no worries at all. Cheers. Casual puts the ball in their court, right? And this is how he responded. Thank you for the offer. Yes, please, and send it along. Coffee is always a good thing. Stay happy. And I responded, here it is, David, piping hot. And guess what? Now he's on my email list, right? This is how I actually get a lot of my clients. You guys excited about this one? I was super excited, when I, especially when I found out how well it works, because it's so different than what other people do. So a couple tips for pitching on LinkedIn. Number one is don't copy and paste an impersonal pitch. The amount of times that I get either, how do you like working at Michaela Alexis? And it's like you've clearly automated that whole thing. Or even worse, hey Alexis, hey Alexa, hey Alexia, hey Margaret. I'm like, who's Margaret? Right? So you want to make sure this is about your reputation. And when you send these impersonal messages, you might think it's like, oh, gosh, I shouldn't have done that. People talk. Right? So you want to make sure that your reputation is always in the forefront of your mind. Do not pitch without nurturing the relationship. With all of those people that I just talked about, again, we had had conversations beforehand. Uh, do not use automation to send pitches. LinkedIn is owned by Microsoft. Don't get banned on LinkedIn, please. Uh, don't add people randomly to your email list. I see people all the time. I am on so many email lists for real estate agents that are in Florida. I'm not going to buy a property in Florida, right? And all it does, and if you go to their profile, they say, if you uh, connect with me, I automatically get permission to add you to my email list. No, that's not how any of this works, right? Again, it's about your reputation. Be somebody that is the go-to expert. Be somebody that provides value. And then don't randomly send listings. That's a big one. Unless the person's asking, don't send it to them. A couple other ways you can stand out on LinkedIn. Number one is video messages. Have you guys seen this? Who uses video messages in general for their business, either through email? Awesome. They work really well, right? It makes it a lot more personal for, for prospects. So you can do that on LinkedIn too. And one of the best ways to do it is when you connect with somebody. So say Brenda. Brenda just came to my open house. You know how I want to make a really good impression on Brenda? She accepted my connection request. Now I'm going to sit there and be like, hey, Brenda, uh, it's so great meeting you. I just wanted to let you know. Have a great week. And I, have you checked out this coffee shop yet? If not, let me know. Whatever you want to say, a couple minutes, right? Or a couple seconds even. It's going to make a big difference. This is one of the, I have a friend that exclusively sells her programs on LinkedIn entirely using audio messages. Right? Again, how do you stand out in somebody's inbox? And what I really love about this is that 
I'm assuming that a lot of you are on the go. This is so much easier than typing. When I have to like sit and like, oh, I actually have to be in my office. But if I'm traveling, and I'm traveling all the time because I'm a speaker, but I can do this and just record it and send it, right? It's, I could do that when I'm like waiting for a plane to take off. And this just is so much more personal. LinkedIn hashtags. What are they, right? So LinkedIn hashtags help you discover and participate in the right conversations for your business and personal goals. So these are supposed to be videos, so we're gonna pretend that they are. So the first way to add hashtags so that your content can be seen is that you can create a post, add the hashtag, and then click publish. And this just helps your content be sorted just like it would if you were using Twitter. The other way that you can discover new hashtags is that if you go onto your homepage and you go to the left-hand side, left-hand column on the very bottom, it says your communities and you can discover new hashtags and you can start following the ones that are relevant for your business. And here are some hashtags that you may want to follow and I curated these just for you guys. You can follow more, but these are, it's a good start. So the first type of hashtag is industry focus. So this is really great if you want to be, you know, in front of all of the news when it comes to real estate. So if you want to connect with other um, agents out there, then this is a really great way to do it. So you would use hashtag or follow hashtags like real estate, real estate marketing, real estate business, or even real estate agent. Um, customer focus, so this is something that I struggled with in the beginning because I would like, I would use hashtags and then I started like actually clicking on them. I'm like, because I would use like um, LinkedIn trainer and I looked at the conversations that were happening, I'm like, we're all LinkedIn trainers and we're just basically like sharing our content with each other and it's like, no one's gonna buy from each other, right? So I had to kind of rearrange this and so I started making the more customer focused. So that means things like, okay, what are your prospects using on LinkedIn? Maybe they're using real estate help. Maybe they're using real estate tips. Maybe they're using first time home buyer. Maybe they're using downsizing. So a lot of the ones that you might be following on Twitter, these would be great to follow on LinkedIn as well. And then location focused. So things like hashtag Toronto, hashtag GTA, all of the places. I could go on and on, but make sure that you're also following any content that's happening within your community. And then lastly is company focus. So these are specifically for the companies that you work for. You just want to be on top of all the company news. Okay, I got two more tips for you guys, and they're both super cool. So have you guys seen this, the QR code? So this is a really great way. I mean, business cards are still around, but they're slowly dying. And they're being replaced by this feature on LinkedIn, which is a QR code. So if you haven't seen this already, if you go onto the LinkedIn app and you open it up, you'll notice in the search bar to the right, there should be a QR code. You're gonna open that up, and then you can either scan somebody's QR code or you can display your code and have other people scan yours. So I really recommend this. I actually force myself to not carry business cards. You know why? Because I kept losing them. And I want to take that relationship that I'm making in person onto LinkedIn as soon as possible. Like why, but we can, I can find all their contact information on their LinkedIn profile. So let's just get straight to it, right? Okay, and here is the second tip. Has anybody seen this one? It is the find nearby feature. Who's heard of this one? All right, you guys are gonna be, I'm gonna be like a magician here if I can actually find it. Okay, so <laughs> if you go onto your LinkedIn app and you're gonna click on my network, is everybody there? Okay, and you see in the bottom right corner, you're gonna see a little icon, a blue icon with a person. You're gonna click on that, and it's gonna open up three different options, and the bottom one is find nearby. You guys see that? Are you using Android? Right there, yep. Yep, that one right there, perfect. Okay, and now you click on the find nearby, so you're gonna have to turn on your Bluetooth but you should see this and all of a sudden, all the people that are also interested in marketing and are rental age or real estate agents that live near you are all displayed there and you can just go ahead and connect with all of them at the same time. 
Does everybody, does everybody know how to do that? You got that? <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Okay, so that's basically it. The, the three steps when it comes to building your LinkedIn or your, your business on LinkedIn, and number one are optimize your profile, make sure that it's client facing. Number two is craft compelling content that's going to attract buyers and sellers using things like behind the scenes. You're gonna notice on social media in general, we're moving towards more candid, authentic content, right? So those videos that you see that are not super stylized, they're going really, really well on LinkedIn. And then number three is nurture your relationships. Learn to network like a pro by using things like video messaging, uh, audio messages, making sure to add a message when you connect with somebody, using the QR code feature, using the find nearby feature. There's gonna be a million more, so look out for new features that are coming up. And here's a cool thing about LinkedIn is that the key to building a community isn't creating a perfectly polished show. It's really just showing what you're made of, sharing your challenges, inspiring conversations, and genuinely being of service to those around you. And I want to help you guys to continue to grow. I don't like to leave anybody hanging. So you can connect with me on all those social media channels. And I have a pretty special surprise. I've put together um, a toolkit that's about 16 pages. So you're going to have a checklist in there. You're going to have writing prompts. You're going to have all sorts of stuff that's going to help you take your LinkedIn presence to the next level. And it's all going to be available for you there at that link to download. And I'll let you guys uh, take a picture of that one. Are there any questions? Do we have time for questions? Yeah? On the mic. Uh, who, who has the question? Okay. So. Oh. <laughs> of course, it's me. <laughs> So I had a question because on some of the podcasts that I listen to, uh -huh. they mention uh, LinkedIn Live and how yeah. that's becoming a big thing. Of yeah. course, the first thing I do is go into my LinkedIn and see if yeah. I have the live feature. I don't. Yeah. So, <laughs> so are you using yeah. this feature and yes. how has that been working for you? Yeah, it, LinkedIn is very slow moving with all new features. So I think currently there's still only about 1,500 people that have access to LinkedIn Live. I do have access, I have used it. It was terrible in the beginning because you really are beta testing it. I remember the first time I went live, I think I lost about 600 followers. Because people, it's a very passive network so people aren't used to getting all these notifications so people got annoyed really quickly. Um, but over time they've changed a lot of that and the culture's changed so it's gotten a lot better and it's super fun. I actually, it's great timing because I just did an interview. I have a friend named Roger Wakefield you guys won't believe this. He's one of like the stars of LinkedIn Live. And guess what? He's a plumber. He's a plumber. <laughs> and he is crushing it on LinkedIn Live. He just started, he would go into his backyard and he would talk about pipes. And he, he literally just gets on and he'll talk about um, networking as a tradesperson. And his, his strategy is actually really brilliant. He actually tries to connect with real estate agents rather than the end customer because he knows if he connects with a real estate agent, they're going to have more people that he can refer to. And that was like, that blew my mind. So if you're interested to see how a plumber became a LinkedIn influencer using LinkedIn Live, that's a really great video that I literally just put up today. Um, but I think it's gonna be really great for business. I think that if you can start using it to again, show thought leadership, get on camera and share something that I don't know, but say it in a way that I'm gonna understand. That's the key, right? It's not just talking about, here's what the market is at, da 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 but get rid of the jargon. I've been, I worked at a property management company for years and real estate is one of the worst industries when it comes to acronyms and terms that may seem really normal to you guys, but are just totally foreign to other people, right? So make sure that anytime you're sharing any sort of thought leadership, that you're simplifying as much as possible for people that are watching. And you're gonna see a whole new world when it comes to LinkedIn. Like the fact that tradespeople are now starting to create content on the platform means that it's a platform that is available um, for all industries to succeed. There's no reason if a plumber is doing well on LinkedIn that you guys can as well. Does that answer your question? Yes. Perfect. Yes. More question? Oh, okay. Here we go. Yes. 
I have, I've, so I, I mean, on LinkedIn, I have 150,000 followers, so I would use LinkedIn. <laughs> but I mean, I also do, I mean, I do uh, Instagram, and I think that's the biggest, the biggest issue, especially when you're running your own, who here is running their own business? We all, all, all of you, okay. So the problem becomes is where do I spend my attention? It becomes hard, right? Now all of a sudden it's like, but then TikTok and Snapchat and you know, the audience might be really big, but is it right for your business? And my answer to that is I always start very, very small. So when I was on LinkedIn, I exclusively used LinkedIn for two years before touching another platform. And then I realized, I'm like, okay, the one thing that's missing for me on LinkedIn are sharing those like kind of behind the scenes quick videos and that's when I started on Instagram. So my Instagram is a lot more candid and I do a ton of stories, especially when I'm traveling. But to me, the way that I look at things is what is missing from your strategy? Is there anything missing? And if there is, then add on another platform, but don't just add on another platform because it's like, oh, well TikTok is growing really quickly. It might not be right for your business, right? <laughs> I mean, there are real estate agents that I've seen that are doing really well on TikTok, but it has to also be sustainable and manageable, and I think that's the most important part because you want to be consistent with whatever you're doing. It's more about targeting your market. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just focus and just learn how to do that thing really, really well. Again, it took me two years. Yeah. A hundred percent. You could even, there's, so on LinkedIn, I do live videos and then I repurpose the videos yeah. as content. And that's because a. When you shoot the video with a Facebook yep. live, it stays in the detached shell. Okay, so on LinkedIn, you have to use a third party tool. So LinkedIn doesn't have like a LinkedIn live tool yet. So you use, you use a third party like either Zoom or Switcher, or there's a few others. So it does record it which makes it a lot easier to repurpose because trust me, I am all, of, and by the way, if anybody is like, I'm tired of creating, I'm all about repurposing what you already have available. So I actually have a, um, a document on my website. It's a hundred different ways to repurpose content on LinkedIn, which was, I, I got to 30 and I'm like, oh damn, I don't know if I have enough. But I think it's really important to figure out what you already have because we constantly get caught in like, I got to do more and more and more. But when you're a business owner, you don't have that, <laughs> availability and sometimes especially when it's like evergreen content where you're sharing tips that are important now or next week or next month or next year well don't just post it once that's the biggest thing that I've learned by the way is we tend to think that when we post something everybody sees it right it's like people are just waiting for our content but if it if it works it's performing well post it next week post it next month right because people new people are going to be engaging with it does that work? Does that make sense? Yeah? Uh -huh. So I've used both. Um, use a, the free trial and see if it works for you. So the difference between the two of them is I really like the fact that you have what's an open profile with premium. So that means that people can contact you without using an email credit. So people can send you a message without paying for it, essentially. Um, you, you also have advanced analytics, so that's really helpful to see, okay, who's looking at my profile? Is it the right type of audience? Because if you're trying to attract clients and you're actually reaching all recruiters, well, maybe there's something wrong with your profile or your content that you need to adjust. So that's really helpful in the beginning. And then you also have access to, so LinkedIn bought lynda.com. Um, so that's about 10,000 new courses that are available on LinkedIn. And of course, I would be pushing that because my course is coming out shortly with LinkedIn. But um, if you're interested in learning about pretty much anything on the planet, um, it's also really great for that. So it's definitely worth a trial, but it's kind of an individual thing in terms of whether you need it or not. Michaela, can you talk a little bit uh, more about the algorithm and in particular the behavioral component that you mentioned? Yeah. And strategically, does it make sense to interact obviously where like end users and consumers are or specifically in the real estate industry? So there's different ways that you can do it. Number one, if you are part of groups, try to interact with people within that group a little bit more. Um, and on top of that, when you're actually are creating content, just make sure that you're responding to all of the comments. So set aside some time, not only to post the, the content, but spend about half an hour to an hour just monitoring and responding to everything that's on there. 
It doesn't mean, you know, go buck wild and spend all day kind of interacting with people on LinkedIn, but it's just about making sure that you're contributing regularly to the LinkedIn algorithm or LinkedIn al uh, ecosystem. Thanks. No problem. Thank you. Okay. Wow, I think uh, we're probably <laughs> up for time right now, right? Thank you.